Hello lovelies, I hope you're all well. I am so excited. Infusible Ink has hit the UK. Been waiting for this for such a long time. So we're going to be doing a few videos this week. The first one we're going to look at the ink sheets. We're going to look at how you care for them and basic use of them. Then the next video we will look at the pens and then the following two videos we'll look at different ways in which you can layer. Layering your sheets and also layering with pens as well. Infusible ink is very different to iron on. First of all iron on sits on an item whereas infusible ink actually infuses into the item. So it will last forever, it will last for as long as your item does. I do have some care advice for you when it comes to working with infusible ink. So the first thing is when we actually open up the pack, you'll see you've got a pack box and then your ink is actually sealed in this vacuum packed sleeve. I will say I've got a very very sensitive nose and when I first open this I find the smell really really strong and I find it really obnoxious. Other people have said they don't smell it, I do. I just want to obviously put your mind at rest that if you have got sensitive smell like me and you open it and that smell hits you, it disperses really, really quickly. I'm not sure if it's the vacuuming process or what it is, but it's an initial smell and then it goes completely. You will not smell it again. You want to try and keep this pack if possible because you do want to store your infusible ink in it. If you can't, you definitely want to make sure you're storing the infusible ink back in its box. So we're just going to remove it from its sleeve. There are two things of importance in the pack. The first one is silica gel. Again, you want to keep this. Infusible ink is quite sensitive and it doesn't like moisture. So you want to make sure that you keep this while storing your infusible ink sheets. You also get a small tester sheet as well, definitely worth trying. Infusible ink, as I say, it's very sensitive, especially when it comes to the heat process, so you definitely want to use this as a trial piece. Wrapped up in your sheets, you'll find the butcher paper. Again, this is very, very necessary to have. Over here in the UK, we don't have butcher paper, so you want to look for a baking sheet or a baking parchment, a plain coloured one, so a white one, and you want to make sure it's got no stick side on it, so anything like freezer paper you don't want to be using. Just something like a baking sheet will be fine. Another must-have with infusible ink is the heat-resistant tape. Cannot recommend this enough. The one thing I will say about it is it is very thick and it is very rigid. So I definitely advise getting a tape dispenser. I just got this one from Hobbycraft, I think it was around about the pound mark. Definitely, definitely worth getting a tape dispenser for your heat resistant tape. Then of course you will need blanks. Again, I definitely advise starting off with the Cricut blanks. Those you're going to get the best results from. And it means that going forward, if you're going to try infusible ink with other blanks, you'll have a good baseline as, as to what it should look like. So you definitely want to purchase some Cricut blanks. I've got the coasters, I've got some t-shirts, and I've got some tote bags as well. The other thing you're going to need is the Easy Press 2. Now Cricut have said the Easy Press 1 will work, however because the heat does not go up to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, you will need to press for a longer time and it will be a slight hit and miss situation. So you definitely want to be using that tester sheet that you get with your Cricut Infusible Ink sheet packs. I've not tried on a heat press but I'm assuming it will work absolutely fine. There is one thing that will not work with infusible ink and that is an iron. The reason being is that infusible ink needs to be heated only once. You cannot keep going in and reheating and also you cannot section heat it either. It needs to be in one complete press. So you need to make sure that you've got the right size easy press for your design and you need to be able to go in and do one complete press. So we are in design space and I'm going to be using a square cork coaster today. Now the size of this is 3.75 inches by 3.75 inches and it does say on the back of the pack. So I find the easiest way to do it is just to make a square 3.75 inches and to work out my design that way. 
So I've got Happy Halloween, which I've got from Images, and I've also got three gravestones, which I've got from my Images as well. So I just want to hide my square, and I just want to come in and select my gravestones, and I'm just going to align, and I'm going to align to bottom, so they're all straight along that bottom edge. And then I just want to move this one slightly. I'm then going to bring my square back and then hide it again. And all I'm going to do is just select everything and I'm going to weld it together. We're just doing a very basic, simple design for this one. Further videos, we will look at layering. I don't need my square, so I'm just going to keep that hidden. I'm then going to go to make it. With Infusible Ink, you do need to make sure that you are mirroring. And we can then go to continue. I'm selecting my maker today, but you can use Infusible Ink with an air machine. We're going to go to browse all materials, and we're going to go down to iron on. And you'll find Infusible Ink transfer sheet. I'm also going to save that to my favourites just by clicking the star and then I can select Infusible Ink Transfer Sheet and go to Done. It's then telling me I need to load my fine point blade. So you want to make sure you're using a green mat. I've got my Infusible Ink here. Now, it is mirrored in Design Space, but on our mat we want to put it Pattern Up. So with Iron On we would make sure it was shiny side or you know, colour side down, but with Infusible Ink you want to make sure it's facing upwards, but it still does need to be mirrored in Design Space. You also need to come in with your Cricut brayer and just make sure that's nice and secure to your mat. We can then load and start cutting. To turn our mat over and we're going to remove our infusible ink sheet. Now with infusible ink we use it differently to how we would use iron-on. So with iron-on we weed. With infusible ink it's more of a roll and crack type method. So we're just going to bend slightly and we're going to get our fingernail under there and then it will just start peeling up. Nice and easy, everything stays where it should. We are just going to come in and remove that excess. You see we've got little white spots there just where the infusible ink has torn slightly, that's fine. It's not going to make a difference to your design as long as there is no infusible ink on it. To remove the middle pieces, you're just going to bend and remove. So you just want to come in and just bend the pieces you want removed. And there you go, our design is then revealed. So I've come into the Cricut Easy Press Heat Guide. This is going to be invaluable when using the Infusible Ink. You absolutely want to be using this. So I've got my Cricut Easy Press 2. I'm going to select Infusible Ink Transfer Sheet. And I'm going to choose my base material, which is the Square Coaster. We're then going to click apply. So this is my Easy Press 2. It's currently set to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. It's just heating up, but I do need to change the time. So I'm just going to click on the time button and I'm just going to reduce it to 60 seconds. You do want to use your Easy Press mat. I've got my cork coaster here. I've got some of the butcher paper which came with my sheet rolls. Now this is only usable once, so you want to try and just use a certain area and then you can cut it down and use the rest. You want to place this onto your Easy Press mat. We're then going to place our coaster down. You then want to come in with a lint free cloth and you just want to give your coaster a quick wipe. You then want to come in and place your design 
and you want to get your heat transfer tape I'm just going to tape one corner and you want to make sure that you do not touch where the infusible ink is I can then turn it round and just secure it to my coaster now you are supposed to then place cardstock on top of this however as I've said, I've got really sensitive smell and I do not like the smell of cardstock being heated up. It really does not agree with me at all. So I'm just going to use the butcher paper. So that is all ready to go and our easy press is all heated up. Now the next part is really important and I'm going to explain why. With heating it up, you need to make sure that you place it straight down and you then move away. You do not want to be putting any pressure on this at all. The reason being is that infusible ink is very sensitive. So if you've got pressure on one part more than another, you're going to see that in the vibrancy of the color. So you want to place it straight down. Now for this reason, if you place it down and press the C, your easy press will move. So what I like to do is add an extra two seconds on. So I'm just going to click my timer and I'm just going to add two seconds. I'm going to take it out of the cradle and I'm just going to hover it. I'm going to come in and press the C, place it straight down and move away. And then I'm just going to leave that to do what it needs to do. Once it's done, you're going to lift it straight up and place it back in its cradle and you're then going to leave this to completely cool down it is super super hot and you do not want to be touching it you can actually see the colour peeking through but I can also feel that heat radiating so just leave it to cool so this is now completely cooled down so I'm just going to remove the tape first and then I can come in and just peel back How amazing is that? Now with some of them, you'll see the colour's completely gone, but with slightly darker colours, so for example the spots, you'll still be able to see those. Here's one I've previously done which was light colours, and that's completely been removed. But as long as the majority of colour is gone, and you can see that it's a nice even transfer, which it is, then you should be very, very happy with that. I just want to show you the difference between the sheet and what it comes out like when it's heated. So you can see that the transfer sheet is quite muted and then in comparison once it's been heated up those colours really do pop. So don't look at a sheet and go oh I don't that's not as bright as I want it to be because I promise you once the heat's got to it it is very very different it's so vibrant. I absolutely love infusible ink. I am so in love with it. So join me for the next video when we'll be looking at the pens and then we've got more videos coming up in the week all about infusible ink and how you use it.